What up, peeps? It's your girl, Dr. Come Back with Takes. Well, is that time we got this reaction time? This will be for the movie titled Terrified. Now, some of you all realize that I just recently did uh, an actual reaction to the movie When Evil Lurks. Loved it. It's uh, by director Damien Rugna. Now, this one exactly is a directed by him as well. Uh, I know somebody had made a comment. They were looking forward to me doing this one, and I said I was looking forward to watching it. This is one of the ones where... Um, I follow a couple friends, uh, horror uh, lovers as me, who uh, post about certain watching movies they watch, you know, and in the evenings, on the weekends, and I watching whatever and all, we always talk about it. And a friend of mine had posted this poster for this one, just like maybe a couple months back. And I was just like, that the poster alone caught my eye. And I was like, okay, it's on the list. And I had, to, had put it on there with a couple other things. So once I saw e when Evil Lurks and I saw who the director was, I went through and I saw that, oh, he's the one who did Terrified. So I already knew instinctively I would eventually be watching it. And didn't realize I would be most likely doing a reaction to it. But since it's going to be something new that I'm going to be adding to my channel, at least every other the week I'll be trying to do a horror movie reaction I'm going to keep um, the uh, flow of my excitement for this this the particular director and his work so I'm really looking forward to this one I'm going in blind I don't know nothing I just saw the poster I didn't watch no trailers so I just want to go in there and just you know take it all in and just see how good I know it is going to probably be so with that said let's go ahead and jump into it I'll see if there was some thoughts at the you guys en la cocina. Yo sé bien lo que escuché. Mm. Estuve toda la tarde escuchando. Hablaban. Mm. ¿Qué te decían? Que me iban a matar. Oh, my gosh. No son horas de ponerse a golpear. Is he looking for what in the world? What's that about? Okay. 
the sheep protector. We all been as a child been there. Oh my god. Thank you. 
Son, son verdaderas. Yo no sé si en el país tenemos fotos dudosas. No, digo que sean dudosas. Su casa. Bueno, pasaron las noches en su domicilio, pero para eso necesitan más programación. Cos y uno de los vectores su casa. Esto es que nosotros vamos a ir más. Cada una de las casas donde creo que ocurre algo fenómeno. Y yo rompí el armario y quise sacarlo. 
Ya se lo repito, tal vez, tal vez lo que ve esta noche no se lo puede. Ni sí. No tiene que tener sangre en las manos, no en este lugar. Un equilibrio es tan ordenado como gajos de una naranja. Y en los dos planos el vidrio. El agua, el agua es un canal que permite llevar y traer la vida muy profunda a estos cuerpos. Ahora lo que no tengo idea es qué tipo de seres son. ¿Qué cosa? Todo esto me está dando. Serious? Oh, wow. Vino con ustedes. 
All right, you guys, I enjoyed this movie immensely. I'm mad at myself that it took me this long, but hey, we're here. Now, I like how this whole situation centers around um, this particular neighborhood. Dealing with a lot of instances of certain things that are happening. Not not able to explain it, of course, you know, because at first you think you're, you know, seeing things or hearing things. But it comes definitely ahead at the beginning of the film when you're dealing with this one couple where you see the wife, I think Clara, could be wife or girlfriend, assuming wife, is hearing things. But when she has a discussion with her um, her husband who comes home after dealing with something, you know, probably for work, and she says, I'm hearing things, you know, I know what I heard, you know, they said they want to, they want to kill me. I'm like, okay, see, that right there <laughs> would have me wondering, okay, where are you getting this from? But then explain to me all the, whatever instances that brought you to this statement. Now, husband, of course, he's hearing, of course, noises, certain things, which eventually with all the different neighbors start to kind of piece together as I'm watching the film. You're dealing with a situation with a gentleman named uh, Walter, recognize the actual actor from When Evil Lurks. And he's dealing with, you know, things in his home and trying to reach out to a Dr. Albrecht and trying to make an appointment to explain this and all that. And you hear the, I'm assuming, assistant, you know, making an excuse or she can't see that she needs this. But eventually, after maybe a couple of call, phone calls, it becomes apparent from what the woman tells me, they need proof, what kind of proof. And of course, he decides to set up, you know, a particular little recording, you know, in his, you know, with some sort of, you know, camera to catch it. And you see, because prior to that, you're seeing things move, like he's moving his bed over a little bit, kind of positioning it, whatever, and all this. So if something kind of abrupt, you know, he's kind of feeling a little bit, you know, like in a situation, you know, covering himself. That bed moved back. I'm like, okay, see. And then you see how eventually he plays back the recording off of the the camcorder and you see this figure of a body you know come from up under the bed goes into what looks like to be the you know the the chest and then he's you know checking whatever and all that first he doesn't see anything and i'm like you know eventually it does see something that you know from the light and it kind of works his way you know into another room and all that but then he goes and i'm just like about then i would have been gone there's no way I want just no. Once I saw the video, I would that's it. That's it. I would have, you know, had to prove it. I'm like, no, I'm not staying here. Whatever. You see what eventually it he's, you know, in a situation where it's, you know, done and we no longer see him. We don't know where he's at, what happened to him. Now I will say with Juan and his wife, you see that part with her initially where she <laughs> I'm like, he's hearing the thump and he's thinking it's his neighbor, Walter. It's not him. The whole time it is actually his wife. And it's so unfortunate, you know, because I'm like, oh my God, grab her, grab her. But he has no control. Whatever's controlling her from side to side in there and all that. She, she's is sad. And he ends up locked up. Now we see these uh, paranormal researchers eventually show up, these doctors, to inquire about certain things because things, you know, happening in this neighborhood, they're not coincidental. You know, first, you know, dealing with a situation with Walter, who's been calling, calling, wanting her her help, and eventually she shows up, and then you're having a situation with Juan who's locked up. You know, he's, you know, the other neighbor who's adjacent to him in his home. So I like how they eventually show up, and you're dealing with a situation with one of the doctors, I um, want to say, um, what is it, John O, who's dealing with the detective, I want to say Funes, in this one, and they're trying to deal with a situation where a mother, you know, loses her son. What's funny is he hears these little voices, you know, talking about don't look at his house, whatever, and all backs up and gets hit. Now, from there, you see the situation where he's buried, this and all that. But, of course, you see fingerprints, uh, footprints, whatever, and all the handprints and all that. He ends up in the home. The mother's slow, clearly distraught, whatever, and all that. Probably hug. You see her all kind of muddied up, dirty. But it's like, okay, something's just not right. Totally, completely out of it. Like, and she's like, you know, uh, he can't go back. I'm like, excuse me? Uh, yeah. Your 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 baby, he is no longer. You're just looking at a course, but of course, you know, the rationale, you know, it is what it is. But I like how, you know, Funes in general are just like, we got to find a way to deal with this. You need to get these two cops out of here. We need to handle this. And Barry, you know, put some semen out so he can stay down there and all that. All in the while, a boy's like, you know, hovering, which is one of his friends, and does a record on that, of course. Gotta be careful when you're talking out and about. Check your perimeter, because anybody could be recording something, they're listening, whatever. And that's kind of where you see the situation where eventually these doctors show up, and they'll, three, that's another one I want to say, is, was it uh, Roland Stock, could be saying the name incorrectly. He's the third, uh, you know, doctor dealing with his paranormal research. Now, mind you, 
you know, eventually all of them are going to go into separate parts of these, you know, different homes and all. They got signed off on it. Even Juan locked up, signed off on it so they can check this to get the proof to help him get out of jail and then deal with these other little instances that can eventually find its way in these other people's homes along this neighborhood. Now, the way it's set up, at first I'm like, okay, what are they going to find? Are they going to be able to figure it out and all that? And I like how I, we get the conclusion with understanding, you know, the point of view from Dr. Rosenstock where you see the situation with him in his hand, the blood seeping back into the cabinet because it's taking his blood, you know, hence from what's something that um, Dr. Albrecht said, you know, these things, they like the blood. Then you see the part where eventually <laughs> Funes, he just can't handle all of this. He's already dealing with health issues. He already made it known to Jenna. He's, I'm about to retire. I want to have this done, clean slate, whatever. But needless to say, it's not going to go that way. I like how you hear from the other doctor who's in there with Funes, explain to him that we need to clean up his butt, blood, this and that and the other. He eventually has him coming and he shows him his point of view of the light and the darkness. Like these two, you know, just paranormal, you know, paranormal, just whole entities, you know, can, you know, be visible, you know, in light and darkness. And I thought that was really key on that. Like, cause I was like, okay, when he had it set up in the room, you see all the different lights. And I'm just like, oh my God. And then he says, come over here. And he just holds it up. Cause at first you can't see, but at a glare, you can with the light, you know, probably like an iridescent light that he had kind of going around the perimeter of the bed. And sure enough, you see feet. You see the body moving, you know, moving back or whatever and all that. And you can see by that time, <laughs> if you know, it's like, I got to get out here and poor thing. I think eventually he does. Or, Cause I'm like, okay, get up, get up. And I'm not realizing, you know, he does a health issue where he ends up probably having a heart attack. But by then damage is done. You're dealing with a boy. He showed his mom the video of them putting him in the, her son, Alicia's son in a freezer, you know, and they're calling our friends. They probably called the cops and that and all that. They're looking for him. And he's just like, you know, we got to deal with Jeno. Jeno's, you know, in another room. He's seeing things because of the different point of view from the way he's looking through the window. Like, is that you in the kitchen? Like, no, I'm not in it. What are you talking about? This and this and that. I'm over here. And that's when you see it. Because I know it shows in my reaction. <laughs> I think I probably did a couple jump scares on the catch off. And it takes a lot for that to happen because I've seen so many. But that right there caught me off guard. And poor thing. You know, his eyes are done. You know, you see if you know, go to, you know, Dr. Albrecht to get her. And she's like, don't believe everything you see. Kind of hard not to, honey. He's got blood on him from, you know, dealing with Jenna and the stuff from the other doctor. But then I'm like her taking her eyes off that wall that's cracked. I'm assuming that's Juan's home. And you see what happens to her. You know, Funes is just like, I can't deal with this. The mother shows up, you know, about her son. Like, you know, you thought I was mad, this and that and other. And all. You did this to my son, whatever and all that. I had to go get him. And she's like, you know what? And he's like, I need to get out of here. When he showed up at that car and she was like, you know, can you take me? I need to get to the... And he saw that boy in the back. He's like, nah. Mm, he leaves. You see what happens. He kind of puts things together like, you know what? I said it to myself, it's like, you might have to burn all this down with it all and just get rid of this and all that, whatever this evil is in these homes. Unbeknownst to him doing that, it's going to spread and it's killing people inside. I'm just like, oh my God. And definitely because Alicia was inside, you know, we see what happened to her clearly probably because of her son being brought back or whatever. And you see he ended up burning the home. He was going back there and all that, trying to open up that door. I'm like, well, you open the doors, you know, and the boy right there shut that thing. I'm like, oh my gosh, like, it's just... I'm almost speechless, but it's just, it was a lot and it was so good. I was just here for it. The music set the tone and many times watching this, but the overall storyline, I'm just totally here for it because as even when Funes said to that doctor, he was like, you know, he's, he was terrified. He says, you know, you know, being scared and all that can be contagious. And it's like, and I don't know about the doctor per so much because, you know, he's kind of was unfazed because he's there to do some work and they're trying to get things done so they can get what they need, you know. But Funes is like, this is not something he's been off of work at all. You know, now we're seeing Juan's locked up and these other gentlemen come up the office and all that. They're like, you know, did he tell you anything? Did he say anything to you? Now Funes is on the run. Well, only two months left to retirement. I feel bad for the man trying to do something he thought was the right thing to do honestly he couldn't didn't really want to let anybody in. he wanted to kind of clean this up that guy jano got him doing stuff he really honestly should not have been doing but you see what happened to jano you know i mean the i just still can't get over the part when them walking up to him talking about don't leave us you know don't finish finish this up i mean your head's dangling just oh my god oh yes yes so 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 good and again i feel for the detective you want to run now 
<laughs> Juan, you know, trying to keep it together, saying he's seeing something, seeing one of the doctors, seeing spirit, and now the thing has followed them. <laughs> now <laughs> it's at the place he's locked up that could cause more harm. I wouldn't be surprised if they had made a second one for this one to continue this, you know, this, you know, story to see, you know, and another, you know, location and all that, you know, definitely would be down for that. But this was so, so good. Just, just great, great movie. Uh, I can't say enough about the director again. You know, this was so, so good. And I'm glad I can finally say I've seen it. Individual, just comment below, you guys. I just anybody who's seen it, give me your thoughts on it. Um, I just really, truly did enjoy this. So, with that said, you guys, again, comment below, let me know what you think. And with that said, I will see you guys on the next uh, movie reaction. You guys take care.